how you're gonna walk through this world. It's so easy to misstep. How are you gonna walk through the world? So easy to screw it up. You gotta rise like the sun does every day. Rise up, look above. The light feels something like love. Hello, and welcome to Something Like Love. I'm Shelley Liedahl, writer, host, and producer of this literary podcast. This is the concluding episode, Season 3, Episode 10, and I've decided to share poems from Spain and my home city, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Do these locales have much in common? Not really, but they both start with S, and I have myriad pleasant memories from each. I've been fortunate to visit several locations in Spain, from Bilbao to Malaga to Barcelona. Spain's Mediterranean coast took my breath away. Oddly, I've never been to Madrid or Sevilla, places to look forward to when global travel gets the green light again. In 2009, I received a fellowship to attend a month-long artist's retreat in a small whitewashed community north of Almeria in the Andalusia region. The town, Mohacar sits atop a hill, and the Mediterranean spreads out beneath it like the bluest blanket. The retreat was called Fondacion Valparaiso. I wrote poetry there. I made exceptional friendships. I played guitar. And I was happy in all caps. First Walk to Mojácar Pueblo 1. Because I miss a man's skin, I happen among lemons and oranges, cradle their surprising weight and granular flesh, leave asymmetrical impressions from my shattered bottom teeth dangling off branches like an installation. Only one way to the whitewashed town up this gallery of cacti ears and butter petals, onion flowers, the playgrounds of aloe vera, fractured tiles stud ditches with geometric designs. 2. It is my birthday, and the construction workers don't know I'm a stranger to all birds except the white dove. I lumber up this nearest mountain in, for once, the right amount of clothes. Laptop banging against my ribs and three common dogs trailing. Three. I could almost believe in love in a Spanish town like this. I could live taking café con leche in the sun skillet of Plaza Nueva before the red-faced British thunder in on sturdy legs and thick-soled sandals. Just me and the ghosts of Phoenicians, Carthaginians, North African moors eddying my ankles like satisfied cats. 4. Slow season. A litany of restaurateurs advertise meals for 10 euros. I feign philosophical interest in the sea and keep ordering wine so I'll not have to leave. I'm entertained by the handsome Moroccan, waltzing his drowsy daughter between tables. It feels like family, and I hover on the edge of it, memorizing the slow turning of waves into silver. Marco, the owner, sets a new bottle before me. It's homemade, he says, and I want you to enjoy it. I am a Dick and Jane book. 
Before dark, I pay him, the sea, the silver. It's always like this, he says, reaching for me across the baklava. Five. This morning, lemons, wildflowers, a snake's after image in grass. I lift my face, mohakar, up there like snow. En caso de fuego. In case of fire, take this body and bind it in muslin. Stake it on la vieja above the ripening almonds and lemons that fit the hand like grenades. The hair will gray and flag toward the Mediterranean before it's useful for nesting birds. Let children approach, testing fingers against knurls and sockets. Rabbits will make parties beneath its bleached and useless feet. Snails will become its new jewelry. In case of fire, let it be whispered that she fancied the tubular yellow flowers one finds in random ditches and weds her own improbable names to. In this year, when we are all dying, let this one stand above Rio de Aguas, the dry riverbed where trucks move like beetles flaring the dust and dogs race into the wind's open scissors. Birthday in Spain 1. Not one of the important numbers, but still this conviction I should be happier, because mimosa is a sublime word, and yesterday I plucked a fruit, neither nectarine nor apricot, while pursuing the mottled and exploding roses. Also, horses, whinnying, perhaps wild. 2. You know what it's like. Every day's good intentions, but serenity and the classification of flowers elude me. I wake hot and cold at 3.30 a.m. in a carnival of bedclothes, an intoxication before the divorce goes through. Daylight, I trudge to an internet cafe with absolutely the last final words. For better or worse, I push, send. What do I think I'm after? A four-candled cake with my name misspelled in red icing. I eat like my renaissance depends upon it. Four. Maybe it's English I'm finished with. Angeles, the cook, explains the blossoms near the kitchen are dientes de leon until they start dying. Then they become Moorish figs. Five, Teeth of the Lion. Six. Erratic conversations on buses with European strangers result in two small poems. Ice bears, wonders the Belgian, and the German says eternal snow. To North America now, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, where I lived from 1983 until 2007, 
mostly in the leafy and artsy City Park neighborhood in a house built in 1913. I raised my family in Saskatoon. I wrote several books there, got my Bachelor of Arts degree at the University of Saskatchewan, and worked in various positions. I was a radio advertising copywriter, a United Church secretary. I sold shoes in the Midtown Plaza, was a freelance writer, and in the earliest days, operated a home daycare and at night worked for a janitorial company. I had a cancer scare and in a long surgery at Saskatoon City Hospital, two softball-sized tumors were removed from my abdomen, multicystic mesothelioma of the peritoneum, a rare disease. Childhood exposure to asbestos was the culprit. The exact same cancer took my brother's life. Every season has its share of light and shadows. Así es la vida. That's just the way life is. Saskatoon is also where I became a runner. I lived near the South Saskatchewan River and pounded down its gorgeous trails almost every day. I hope that my poem, titled Saskatoon, gives you some idea of my experience of and appreciation for the Bridge City, the Paris of the Prairies. Saskatoon Chameleon River Reflecting Skyscape Bridge City Wonderland Tree-wrapped, island-studded, animated with Canada geese and beaver splash Pelicans' elegic wheelings into the perpetual churning below the weir Water dives Whole civilizations of fish no one ever sees the shapes of when you follow a river, you enter its story, the cinematic play of luminosity and shadows, green space, robin song, concrete girders plus a riddle of sticks and stones. The photographers know it's all about where you stand. You leave home. Note cages of light inside the corner store's windows, how puddles from last night's rain make irregular shapes on the asphalt path beneath a lathering of homogeneous leaves. Suns topping cottonwoods along the Miwasan Trail. Nearer the sky, a glazer sets glass into the city's newest condo. Spent crabapples make their autumnal pie beneath the persistent tree. Autumn is like this, trickster, the season and the South Saskatchewan this city ever changing its weather, its geometry of rooftops. How it turns you inside yourself, a convolve of memories and imagination, until you're not sure what was and what you've invented. Like road hockey beneath streetlights, exhibition parades and photos with Santa, getting lost in the ring around the rosy dresses, at the Army and Navy Department Store, marble stairs grooved with the boots of time, a spin-around door. When the elevator stops, a diffident man calls, going up and sometimes down. It's a morning of ropey wind, a brooch of leaves beneath the Circle Drive Bridge, mosaic stones there and there, throw rugs of sage. A boy's missing bike is the river's surrender, garter snakes and graffiti, consonants one can grind beneath teeth. Measure that against sibilant train sounds, vibrations felt through the body's vascular lace on the bridge's tie narrow crossing. Just now, the outermost leaves wear paint colors and everyone's taking the air. Artists and athletes Tourists and bird trackers, preschoolers wearing same color vests, held hands forming a chain. Ask a child, what is the river? Icicles soared cold, 
skyscraper deep, dark aquarium. The river is the flight of a rock skipped three times three across its skin. Minnow scent, sand powder, and smoke tails. Some call it nightlight, mirror for stars and satellites. I spy something blue, maybe today, but it's also gold and obsidian, a delusion of chocolate, winter silver and bridge shivering. Turn and the wind as you walk west likes you even less than before. From the university's bush opulent bank, the architecture of downtown stacks up like building blocks. Windows are postage stamps. A city is engineered through back labor and brick, buzz saw and jackhammer, and what's not meant to be heard, the dawn kayak, the solitary rower's heart, or the flap of red wings in binoculars. A consortium of clouds knitting new scarves while planes below, knapsacked, dog-leashed, ear-phoned, strangers tread a centuries-old path along the shoreline. Multiple personalities, this river. Morning Snake River, Weekend Ice Cream River, private conversations at the weir. Night River is best, the water old-fashioned looking glass and moon. Now, home time, wind flattening prairie, rattling buckbrush, frisking leaves. You examine a stone, its striations like dry rivers remembered, surface pocked, lunar landscape, gray as bone dust that's been here since buffalo times. Thank you for listening to Something Like Love. I've shared a lot of my personal life in these 30 episodes. If you missed the earlier ones and want to hear them, it might be easiest to find them on YouTube. Google Shelley A. Leadall and there they are. The four poems in this episode appeared in my book, Wretched Beast, published in 2011 by Bushek Books in Ottawa. I wish you a healthy and happy summer, my friends. Please be good to yourselves and good to each other as you walk through this world. How are you going to walk through this world? It's so easy to misstep. 